A few years ago, um, we decided to buy a 5.1 DVD home theatre system. And being kind of cheapskates, we bought this really, really plasticky and cheap uh, Ventura STS-91 based um, system. And basically all it does is play DVDs and CDs and that kind of thing. It doesn't take any um, inputs in it, so you can't feed this of anything else to then sort of drive the six speakers. So I thought, based on the sort of topology this likely uses, we can then potentially um, sort of hack it to work quite well as sort of like a PC 5.1 amplifier. So now I've already kind of semi taken this to bits, so you won't be able to see all too much. So currently at the moment, all that's in the case is basically just to do with the DVD playing part. So on. The, this side of the case we obviously have the DVD drive itself and um, it then connected through a mixture of cables here onto the DVD decoder module which is this uh, board we have here and basically long story short this black cable then connected onto the main amplifier board and then obviously the amplifier board then connected to all the outputs so here you can see the amplifier board in a bit more detail so we have a heat sink here, which is where the amplifier um, amplifiers are. So there's three currently on there at the moment, because I've currently used three of them. And this is where the input from that thick ribbon cable, the thick black ri ribbon cable I was talking about earlier comes from. Then there are just some transistors along there, which I think are effectively working as preamps to then pass the signal onto these. If I just turn the board over, if you follow the tracks from say those amplifier ships all the way around and across you see they end up at the outputs so my plan basically was um, as it's quite easy to find the uh, data sheet for these because they're TDA 2030As uh, based on the suggested circuit diagram I could then build the circuit off the board and then run it so here I have the circuit built and you can see you've got the live and the, well, the output feeding a speaker up there the DC input here and the sort of input from the device up here it's all very much a simple circuit I mean all there is is there's a capacitor there across uh, the input and then there's just basically this other little circuit here with two capacitors and two resistors and that's really pretty much it and this this can output about I think about 30 watt peak so it does get pretty loud certainly too loud for that speaker but you see I've got one channel here, so I'm going to try and build the circuit up for the remaining channels on this board to try and get either two, three, four, five, or even six channels out of this, which is going to be rather time consuming. So I've got another one of these produced now, and I found that by excluding a resistor there, I could make the amp go on complete overdrive, and it, it the, the sort of power it was outputting was pretty insane but the chip was getting very hot very quickly which is what, why I've got it on this heatsink but even then so um, if I just find a resistor and hook it up I can then almost get stereo with this one although the amount of time it takes to produce each of these circuits means that I'm probably not going to bother for the time being to make a surround set up because it is just so time consuming and also just the aesthetics of this is pretty poor as well and I wouldn't dare put it in an enclosure in case I break all those tiny solder joints. So you can see I've got the two, two connected up onto the heatsink there. And it does work fine. I mean, there's a whole load more on the actual, on the main board. So you see I've got another three on there that I can then use. But the thing is, it takes so long to wire up each one that I'll really, it'll just really just be better for me just to buy one. Just buy like a six channel amplifier off eBay, really.